All right, Big Crit, thank you for joining me here today. I'm Ashley Tiffany, a reporter at The Nocturnal. So yes, how are you? I'm doing good, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Uh, just being creative, um, trying to stay positive at all times and just kind of kicking it right now because there ain't no touring yet. Right, yeah. right, oh my gosh. In 2021, I think it's starting off kind of great for like all of us because last year yeah. was just so yeah. much. Yeah, so, it, yeah. Right, right. What have um, 2020 taught you the most before we jump in? Oh, uh, man, for starters, to, to really love on your family and friends. Um, I, I lost uh, two uncles and my aunt last year, and it was one of those things where you not only did you not have time to grieve, um, but it just, it kind of brought a lot into perspective, um, just as far as like how I interact with people, the amount of positivity that I really want to give out, and then just calling and checking up. I mean, because you, you assume you got all this time to just kind of be around folk and nah, I'm going to see you on Christmas and Thanksgiving. And when those opportunities don't come about, you know, it can be life shattering. So for me, it's really just putting the most effort I can to hang out with my family and talk with them and just share moments because it's so important. And 2020 definitely taught me that. Wow. I think you hit it right on the head. And with yeah. this passage EP, it came out just in time because... Yeah where everybody needs it. And I, I just want to say I enjoyed it. And I'm okay, happy that you. you were a part of it as well. Me but too. I was honored and blessed to be a part of something like that. Wow. So yeah, just talk about the project a little bit and your participation. And Well, I have to definitely give a shout out to uh, my marketing manager, Steve-O, because I've known him um, for like maybe 11 plus years at this point. And uh, he was the person that reached out to me to be a part of it. And He's known and my voice heard my music over and over again. And I haven't particularly done voiceovers before, but he felt that my voice people were aware of. And the fact that I'm Southern and I'm country and I don't hide from it and uh, that it would be perfect to be a part of it. And I was able to, I don't know, it, it, it also put me in a space just listening to it because I got to give a, a shout out to the writer, uh, Jamie Lee Lewis and the producer, Mike. But being able to do that, knowing that there was no particular pressure to worry about sales or worry about or with this radio or streaming and just to do something that's for, for humans, um, just for everyday people, doesn't matter what you got going on in your life. I think these are the kind of the kind of things we need to listen to more than ever to become grounded, to kind of be silent, to be amongst like in a safe space and really, really kind of reflect on what all we went through last year and kind of un undo all that trauma that we've been going through. And I think to be a part of this kind of project was was definitely a blessing and an honor for me. And what do you hope? I think you kind of answered it already, but what do you hope people get out of this, listeners? Uh, just, just to sit and be still for starters, right? Um, and not because you have to, because what we were going through with the pandemic, but to really kind of get in touch with yourself, right? Kind of sit and listen um, and, and, and try to not only reflect, but to kind of let go of certain things, right? Therapy is something I, I talk about uh, a lot because I, I started maybe six years ago and it changed my life. And a lot of that was breathing in the beginning, like learning how to just sit, be quiet and breathe. Um, and with that, I was able to learn when I start to disassociate or when I'm having a panic attack and work through those things without um, it being in a position where I don't really know how to control my thoughts or I'm having a moment, but really like, all right, let me just, what bothered me, what triggered me? and how to kind of breathe through it and learning how to meditate every morning and 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 kind of dealing with whatever you dealt with the, the day before can help push you along normally in a positive perspective the in this new day um and so for me it's just about people knowing that they can work through their traumas and be honest and uh be transparent um with themselves and just sit down and listen to how you feel you know right so during the creation of your participation on this project, mm -hmm. did you have to like meditate before creating the voiceovers? Like, how was it? Uh, so I, I, I began to work on a project. I think it was around like maybe 11 o'clock at night. Um, and it was for me, that's roughly late because I spoke to most of the people I normally speak to and it was kind of quiet. So there wasn't like a lot of my phone going off or, you know, just turning off everything and listening to the rough that they had sent me. And that, put me in a space of calmness. Mm -hmm. And by that alone, I was like, okay, well, I have to make sure when I am doing this that I can't be frustrated or angry um, and just listening to what they'd already done. And it kind of opened me up to be in the same space and to truly take my time with doing it as well and not rushing. Um, and again, I, I hope that it was reflected in the record. I mean, well, in the project in itself and that it truly helps me too, just listening to it, so. 
No, that's perfect. That's perfect. And when do you truly feel at peace? It's around maybe five or six o'clock in the morning. I I have a routine now where I get like uh, some tea, uh, maybe a peach detox tea or something like that. And I kind of sit to myself and I just drink the tea and I kind of just sit and think um, about what I'm going through or how I feel in the moment. And that is, that that's normally a great way for me to start my day off, right? Um, but normally early in the morning when ain't nobody calling, most people still sleep, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I can just be to myself and not really worry about what's going on on social media or on politics, but just truly just what am I and how I feel in the moment is the most important thing at that time. Right, and does it help you with writing as well? Definitely, yeah. uh, although working on music is like, a tad bit different, right? Because I use that as a form of therapy as well. Like that might call for me to channel my anger into it. That might call for me to channel my sadness into it, which has taught me to not really run away from my emotions. Like whatever I'm feeling in the moment, it's fine, but how can I be creative with this? How can I make this in a way where somebody that might be going through the same situation can relate and then they'll know that they're not alone in that feeling too. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to my music, it's like, no, if I'm angry, well, I'll talk about that. You know, if I'm if I'm if I'm depressed or if I see what's going on in society and it frustrates me, I'm going to talk about that, um, which that is therapy in itself. It's like a, 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 a musical punching bag, if you want to say. Right. You know? that, yeah, it is therapy. And would you consider that also like motivation for you or to just. Yeah, talk? I, I mean, well, it's the motivation part comes from when people hear the music and then they 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 say that they either they needed it or they they can relate or they understand where I'm coming from. So that's the, the human connection of it. Um, and that's really what I enjoy a lot of times because, you know, 2020 communicating with people and actually being in front of somebody was so difficult to do that music was one of those things where it was an easy way for me to continue to communicate with people because we lost the physical form of it. But music and um, like we're doing right now was still very much really available and it was very necessary. Perfect. So any last words about OK Players, the Passage EP? That's I mean, well, I, I, I did, I'm, I'm, I'm honored. I'm blessed to be a part of all the creatives that really helped put the project together. Um, even if I wasn't on it, it would still have been an amazing project. I did not expect to do any interviews off of it because it, for me, it was no expectations at all. It was just, hey, I'm happy to do this. Right. Um, but it's just beautiful that there's no amount of pressure. There was no deadline there was no oh we got to do this do that and people are taking to it in a very organic um and beautiful way and I'm just blessed that people want to hear my voice and their magnitude I loved it I loved it I'm looking forward to more voiceovers from you now. hey see and, and that's what my, my, my homie Steve-O told me like yo like I, this is gonna be huge for you bro you know just do it yeah and uh he was right he was right on time with no, that that's perfect because I can listen to this in the morning because I'm a hip hop head, but I yeah. can't listen to hip hop in the morning. So this, yeah. I can do this while I do my yoga and everything. Well, this will definitely keep you grounded in all sense. And I think I, I don't want to, I don't want to forget it's one other name that had Tanil Craig. I want to give a shout out to her too, because she was the creative director for it um, as well. So, yeah. Okay, you know. great. Perfect. Thank you yeah. so much, Big Craig.